about five years ago, I took part in a very big project. It was the first RFID deployment in Sub-Sahara, West Africa. The aim of this project was to track company assets and personnel across 31 states in a particular country. It was a success in the sense that the management, through a dashboard, could actually influence a lot of decision making. Just within seconds, they can decide who goes to a particular branch, balance scorecards, who gets a raise based on digital footprints of the employees. To the, to the employees, they were not actually aware of this. We all tell them we are just trying to track the company's high-value asset. Well, we all know the most valuable assets in any company is actually the human resources. Another event that inspired this talk is a journey just between Bolton and Manchester. I was in a bus from Manchester going towards Bolton. I was seated at the back seat when I realized at every stop as we approached Bolton, it was just flashing green light, green light, green light, green light. I was worried. So as a data scientist, I left the back of the seat. I went towards the front. Sitting by the side of the driver, I was watching what he was doing. He was actually doing nothing. It was moving at the same velocity and speed. I was worried. Why? Because I know there's what we call a central traffic management system. Being deployed in some starting cities in the UK, but I'm not aware if it was deployed in Manchester. What does this traffic management system do? It actually influences okay, where we are trying to go. Mr. A, if, for instance, Mr. A is going to Stadium B, his movement can be influenced from a central hub meaning they will give Mr. A access to the stadium before others. And if they want a particular traffic within a particular route, it can be done from that central control unit. And I believe this is something we need to be worried about, and definitely something we ought not to be happy about. Why? Because we our reality, as we know it, is currently being altered. Well, before I started pointing fingers, let's look at what virtual reality is, because the title of my talk is how we are already living in someone else's virtual reality. What is virtual reality? It's basically a computer technology using what? A virtual reality headset to generate images, sounds that replicate real life environments. About six months ago, I actually used one. A colleague of mine bought one for about a thousand pounds. Putting on this headset, what I saw it was just amazing. I was at the bottom of the sea looking at fishes, and I didn't want to leave this environment because it was so lovely. It was real. At some point, I didn't want to give back the asset, but I have to eventually. Now, imagine for just five seconds, if the planet, Earth as we know it, is being worn by certain individuals or groups controlling what we do, the friends we have, what we eat, where we go, how we sleep, the work we get, what we put on, and a lot of other patterns or behaviors that we exhibit every day. But how is it possible? How is it possible that some group of people or highly networked individuals can actually influence our patterns or behavior? Well, there's a new form of gold. There's a new form of oil out there. We know we can find gold in Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, Angola, 
and some other few countries like Libya. Diamond, gold can be found in places like Ghana, places like Nigeria, and other parts of the world. But this new form of gold, this new form of oil, can be found everywhere. This new form of gold can be refined to produce billions of refined chemical products. This new form of gold is the purest you can find. This new form of gold is everywhere. This new form of gold is data. Data is not new. The ancient Egyptians used data. The Romans used data. In the 80s, we used data. In the 90s, we used data. And currently, we use data. But what is different now in the 21st century is the volume the variety and the velocity at which we are producing this data is massive. In the 80s, we have probably 100 megabytes, highest 1,000 gigabytes as we speak. Within seconds, we are generating petabytes, we are generating terabytes, we are generating massive amount of data because wherever we go we actually live behind digital footprints digital footprints in the sense that as everybody is seated here each and every one of us are actually living in digital footprints we are being filmed by the camera we are being seen online we are all using our mobile phones right now some of us are tweeting. They are obviously that from things. As I've said, this new form of gold can be found everywhere. Gone are the days when we are told, if you have the money, you control the world. No. This 21st century, if you have the money and the right set of data sets, data, you can control anything. You can influence democracy, war, anything, even famine. How is this big data, this data, as we say it? I'm sure most of us have heard big data. Big data is just a marketing term. Big data means the ability to process, okay, using a display system, parallel using a particular big platform. In the 21st century, as we speak, text, PDFs, Sound, images, structured, unstructured data, every form of data can be processed as we speak. Passed through a platform and based on variables or models, the, the, the earth as we see can be seen through a dashboard. A colleague of mine told me, Patrick, 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 I've seen what they use with our data. I said, really? He said, yes, tell me. He said, they are profiling the whole area. With what? He said, our credit card or debit card. He said, some of the stores are obligated to submit those data to some certain corporation. She told me she was actually using some form of Excel to do this. And I said, so what are you going to do about it? He said, Patrick, I'm not using my debit card again. I said, really? Yes, because they are trying using my card. I said, okay. I told her, when you go into the store, what's the first thing you see up there? Cameras. When you're about to make payments, what do you see? Camera. There's nothing we can do about it. We will always leave digital footprints everywhere we go. Now, time to point fingers. Whose reality are we really in? James Gloeffler, a TEDx event in Zurich 2012. Prior to that event, they actually went through a research and they discovered something. The title of that talk is Who Controls the World? The research proved that 737 highly networked individuals are controlling 
80% of transnational corporations and starting their influences, their power, and they have access to this data. They decide what goes around. They have this visualization dashboard, changing variables based on proven models and algorithms. But where are they getting all this data? As I said earlier, we need digital footprints. <coughs> but apart from this digital footprint that we all leave behind, and we can do nothing about it, there's what we call data sets marketplaces. What's a data set marketplace? It's a new form of marketplace through which our data sets are being exchanged. Just yesterday, someone told me that someone in Tanzania has his data and he was contacted with proofs. He wanted to get it back. But he was amazed. How could I be in the UK and someone in Tanzania has my data? It's because our data are being exchanged by big transnational corporations. Individuals, because that is the new form of gold. That is the new form of control. And that is how the rich are getting very rich as I speak. Company A could be a coal calling company. Company B could be car sales. Company C could be insurance. They are all exchanging this data. So what do we take home from this? Yes, we leave digital prints everywhere we go. There's nothing we can do about it. But this is our reality. This is our life. We decide who becomes our friend. We decide what we buy from the market. We decide where we go. When we wake up in the morning and want to go to Stadium B, we should get there without our pattern of behavior being influenced by a central system. If you want to go to a store, we should be able to buy bread. A certain type of bread, the bread we want to buy, because they can alter that too. Looking at our pattern of behavior, you know, okay, Mr. Egg comes every Tuesday to buy milk. We can do something about that. To me, I believe we should have a big dashboard through which we can see all these data sets being exchanged, possibly globally. Yes, they will be exchanged globally. We are not against them using our data for academic research, maybe for, 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 the, for cancer treatment, for advancements of technology. But what you are against is someone controlling our reality. And again, what can we do? So I'm asking you all to go home today and think about it. Is it for us to start campaigning that data sets need to be transparent? Or to encourage the government to come out with policies? Because the life that we live is possibly influenced by a certain group of people. Thank you.